So, uh, my name is Timothy van Helbergen. I'm the managing director of Triangle Factory. Uh, we're a small independent game development studio um, based in Belgium, uh, in Ghent. And I'm going to talk today about um, Triangle Factory and how we got involved into serious gaming. Um, so, first of all, um, it all kind of started with a serious game um, back in 2008. We competed in the Imagine Cup, um, so me together with some fellow students, um, we were studying at Howe West University and we got, got the chance to compete in the Microsoft Imagine Cup, which is actually a competition, uh, that's a global competition that's been done every year. And the idea is that you use technology to solve a problem that the world is currently facing or is still going to face. Um, back in 2008, um, the team was around sustainability and environmental issues. Um, so we created a game called Future Flow um, together with three fellow students. And the idea behind Future Flow was that you build a city and um, you have to solve um, sustainability and environmental issues by solving puzzles. Um, so it was a kind of a puzzle game, city sim. Um, uh, based game where you had to solve puzzles and by solving those puzzles you actually made cities more sustainable and environmental friendly um, and eventually we even won a prize with that we were able to go to the finals um, and we ended up second place um, in the global competition which was really really awesome we met a lot of interesting people and I guess I mean we still had to finish our studies so but we were really st being stimulated by a lot of people to actually start our own company, so we thought, okay, really, really cool, we really want to do that, we want to make commercial games, we want to make really cool, fun games, and um, so we started uh, Triangle Factory, which is um, a company that has grown since 2010, um, till now to about around from three to six people, um, and back then we wanted to do our own games, we wanted to do really cool stuff, uh, all the really fun games that you see on, on TV or on the popular consoles, but we kind of faced the hard reality that the game industry is a really, really competitive market and um, creating games takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of money. Um, if you look at the AAA industry right now, um, those production costs go up to $100 million. Um, on the very competitive market, even mobile <laughs> games or even the, the platforms that are um, being set to be m more easily, easily accessible to smaller developers, um, there the production costs even already go up to 250k to be competitive on that market. So yeah, we definitely didn't have that kind of money available when we started in 2010, so we kind of needed a way to earn money. So. The most uh, simple solution for us was to become Guns for Hire. Um, so the idea was that we were going to create games um, for other people, people that were looking um, to use games for um, entertainment purposes. For example, uh, we went to advertisement companies um, to actually sell our services uh, to create games for stimulating um, brands. I mean, and actually, um, yeah, to to um, do marketing campaigns and things like that. But we quickly, quickly realized that, I mean, why so serious? Um, why eventually ending up in the serious game market? Um, we've done it before um, through the Imagine Cup and we realized that there was actually a growing demand for ga using games or game technology for something that wasn't really meant to be entertainment. Um, so games can be used for a lot more than just merely entertainment. Um, and then I'm thinking um, about serious games and educational games, but even just using game technology for something else than games um, can be quite interesting. So I've got some examples uh, lined up um, that I want to show you. Um, so these are some of the projects that we did over the past three years um, where we used games or game technology for something else than just merely entertainment. So, some examples. Uh, the first one that I'm going to show you is Rosie. Um, it's actually a game that we made together with the University of Kent um, and Kirsch Media in the UK. Um, the idea behind the game is actually um, that you are put in this, into the situation of a social worker 
and um, you kind of have to investigate a problem of child abuse. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty heavy subject. Um, but the idea was actually, it was, um, this, the whole scenario was written by um, a professor and psychologist at the University of Kent. Um, the idea is that you actually play a game where you have to go through dialogue with these people, you actually have to investigate the whole situation, and based on the um, dialogue options that you choose while you're having a conversation with these people, um, their reaction will be different depending on your um, choice and actions. Um, so the interesting thing was that it didn't replace any lessons, but it was used in class for people that were studying to become social workers um, to eventually um, assess certain, si certain situations and to see if um, people are reacting in the right way. Um, this certain discussion points come up um, and these are then discussed in class together with uh, the people that are following the, the lessons. So it was a really interesting project to do, and it's a really good example of how games can actually be used for educational purposes. Um, then the next one is actually actually not really a game at all, and, and there might be some discussion if this is more even more tending towards an, a real app. A, a real app. Um, but I think it's a good example of how you can use game technology for something totally different. Um, basically, Malexis is a company that makes um, uh, that makes chips and, and semiconductors and sensors for the automotive, automotive industry. And they have salespeople that um, bring along sales boards and it's a really, um, a really painful task to always bring these demo boards. They have to create them. They have these physical chips on them. It, it easily breaks down. They have to create these demo boards for every salesperson that they have. And um, yeah, they have to connect it to a computer to be able to show how it works. So basically they just asked us, can you make a virtual version of this? Because all of our salespeople already have smartphones or they have tablets. And if we can just create a virtual version of it, I mean, these people can just take it on, on, their, on, their, on their iPad or their, their Android tablet um, and bring it along. And it's a lot, lot easier. It doesn't break that easily. Um, and they can show it really quickly to people in a very short pitch. So this is an example, it's a really simple example on how we use the same 3D engine that we normally use for games, but actually used it for something completely different uh, for a sales app. And I mean, it costs them a lot of time. Uh, it's, it, I mean, it, it actually saves them a lot of time creating these, these uh, demo boards. Um, and then the last game that I wanted to show is a game which is actually meant to be a little bit of entertainment as well. It's a game that we made for uh, the, the city of the Pana. Um, and the idea is that children between 8 and 14 can go around and um, walk in a traffic-free area and actually play um, a lot of mini-games with an iPad that they can use. Um, and um, they can scan QR codes at certain places, play a lot of mini-games. Um, but while they're actually playing these mini-games, they learn about the cultural heritage about the area and um, they also learn a little bit about the historical background of the of the of the area. So it's it's actually more than just entertainment. They actually learn something from playing this game, uh, which is I guess quite interesting that they don't even realize that they're actually learning something. Um, so the future is awesome. Um, I guess the last thing that I wanted to say is that um, game games and, and commercial games are really pushing technology in to a lot of different interfaces right now, a lot of different new stuff that's coming out. We have the Kinect 2, uh, we have Leap Motion, things like that, new interfaces, and then virtual reality is really becoming a lot better and we're really on the brink on a lot of new stuff that's being pushed by games and technology that's actually being pushed by games but actually creates um, a lot of opportunities for other things as well, um, for simulations and educational purposes as well. So there's a lot of new technology that's uh, is very useful and that's actually being pushed by the game industry. Thank you.